a lot to unpack. Obviously, sure. you looked at the uh, Charger side of this here. But, Peter, for you, what stands out the most in this blowout win? Yeah, you know, I look at Antonio Pierce, and mm -hmm. the team got shut out last week. And it was like, well, it was a nice story, but let's talk about a real coaching search when this thing is done. <laughs> and to go out and have his guys four days later come out and do this on the same field, uh, just you know, mere, less than a week after getting shut out, it was unbelievable. I, I look at this Raiders team, and I look at what they're looking at as far as the next few months go, and do you want to blow this whole thing up? Do you want to bring in another GM? Or is Antonio Pierce going to be the guy who can do this? As we show the highlights of that Raiders win, you have to understand, this team was completely defeated like in the locker room. Like, Devontae Adams is answering questions uh, about the offense, and is O'Connell going to be able to even start? Like, and they just be able to turn the switch on. Now, it's been reported, I'll go another level with this. Antonio Pierce is leading on a lot of guys. He's also brought a lot of ex-coaches in. Like, they've had gentlemen like Adam Gase in the building, who's a former oh, yeah? head coach, who's like, let me be around and let me help you and let's see how we can do this. Tom Coughlin has spoken with Pierce extensively. This is not a flash in the pen. And as much as we're gonna talk about Staley and whether he's getting fired uh -huh. and whether, I think Antonio Pierce made an even louder statement than Staley. Staley's thing might have been a formality at this point. The season was lost, it's done. Pierce might have put his stake in, in the ground and said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not just an interim coach. I'm a guy you really have to consider. Look how these players respond to me. Mm -hmm. And as the weeks go by to show that, hey, we could come from adversity, come from a 3 nothing loss to do what we did last night, it's pretty awesome. Real quick on Staley, as much as we want to, you know, Pelissero is great and says, well, they didn't have Keenan Allen, they didn't yeah, have Justin Herbert, they did have Khalil Mack, they mm -hmm. did have Derwin James, they did have Austin Eckler. Defense. The, that defense gave up 63 points. Some of those were pick sixes, and we know, but like just an unbelievable loss on national television. Very hard to bounce back from that. Yeah, it, this reminds me of the movie Vegas Vacation when Clark uh, takes a beating out there. I haven't seen a beating like that, and you guys can go uh, look up the rest of that sure. statement since uh, <laughs> somebody turns something loose. But this was a complete demolishment by the Raiders of the Chargers, and I, I might have just made up a word. Demolishment. I didn't want yeah. to cut you off. <laughs> John, you're two for fitting. two, baby. Keep going. Stay I think hot. it's fitting right now. <laughs> like, Stay hot. When you look at what the Raiders did last week, mm -hmm. and, and the players all talked about, we kept walking in the locker room after putting a donut up there, and it was like, man, this is awful. And I think AP leaned in on him, like, this is feel this, like, like embrace this. The next week, he, he told the players, we're going straight gas pedal. Mm -hmm. even, even though we're up 42 to nothing at halftime, gas pedal. I want to score as many points Half as back possible. option. <laughs> and, I, I, like, when the players, you're always playing for each other, but when your coach all of a sudden just kind of, like, empowers you, uh, I think we're seeing the, the, the product of all that. Not only that, not only are you doing this with Aiden O'Connell, but I just kind of feel like there's a couple players that maybe exercise some demons in that game last night. All right. All right, Jack Jones with the unbelievable posterizer that interception. So cool. That's going to be on a T-shirt soon. You know, remember sure. when Tebow did his thing and Griffining? Like that's going to be his. <laughs> Jones, in, yeah, Panda and Jack Jones. Jones. <laughs> think about this: like the relationship of a coach and a player. AP Antonio Pierce coached Jack Jones in high school at Long Beach College uh. Prep. Then he transferred to Arizona State. AP was a coach there. He's been with him like through all three levels. So there's there's one guy that was drafted by the Patriots, fourth round yeah. pick last year. Cut. Now all of a sudden he's on a new team. Uh, you know, there was a former coach there, a coach for the Patriots. So there's a lot of little things going on there. But the other guy that I'm looking at is Jacoby Myers. The last time we saw him throwing a pass in that stadium, it was for the Patriots. Yeah, it was cool. awful. We've gone over. You broke that play yeah, down. It was, it's, it was one of the amazing. wildest plays of the season last year. He threw two passes last night. Yeah, you're right. Two short. And one of them was for a touchdown right here. So you want to talk about exercising the demons. Yeah. He'd thrown two as a Patriot before, but for him to be able to go out there and kind of eliminate or what happened, all right, that's a bad memory. I'm going to turn the page right there. Um, I thought that was pretty neat for Jacoby Myers on a personal level, but this was an unbelievable win. So excited for my former teammate, yeah. Antonio Pierce, and what he's doing. This is real. Like, they're talking about it all broadcast. The players want him to be the coach. And I, I don't know how you, if you're Mark Davis, I don't know how you look at that and go anywhere else. Well, there's look, there's only one guy who needs to want him to be the coach, and it's Mark Davis. Mm -hmm. He's sitting up there giggling as his team kicks the crap out of a division, <laughs> right? Like, he loved that. He was having so much fun last night. It's the only guy you have to impress. But as far as everybody else, we I think we need to understand, this wasn't just, oh, a bad Thursday night game. This this was history. History. When you when it goes to halftime, 42 to nothing, bring up the full screen. In terms of largest halftime deficits ever, ever, it's the four largest. So the top one you might remember, it's Brady and the red jerseys against Jason McCourty's Titans, and they were up 45 points at half. Last night, 42. 
Packers Bears was one of these Jay Cutler whoopings that they would take from the Rodgers Packers. And then down there, the Lynn Dickey Packers yeah, Lynn. again on the Bucks. So that is the second largest halftime lead ever. And like once you get in it, let's just look at some of, of the, the whooping that I talked about because – I love when the research comes back from games like that and it comes up with teams that don't exist anymore. Uh, Cincinnati Bobcats. Yeah, yeah. I, I got you. I got you. So 42 points in the first half by Raiders. I think the important point was the Raiders were shut out last week. It's not like the Chargers yeah. ran into the Dolphins or something. They get 63. Let's see some of it from last night. Most first half points scored by a team shut out in their previous game within the same season ever. It's never happened. And the last team it was the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets and the Dayton Triangles. Frankfurt. You know what I'm saying? Love this. Frankfurt Yellow. And then it's also the second most points in NFL history scored 63 by a team following a shutout. You got to go back to 19, 1934, where the Cincinnati Reds, who was a football team, lost. Guys, we're talking about Reds and Yellow Jackets. Like it's 2023, <laughs> and those are the Chargers giving up 63, not to the greatest show on turf. To Aiden O'Connell. Yes. <laughs> what? I don't care if you give up Myers. 63. The Broncos gave up 70, and they may be going to the playoffs. But you gave up 63 that night in that way. And also, the image of this, I know it's the greatest pick six we've ever seen in all this. The image afterwards. Just, let's bring up the heart and soul of the Raiders sitting with the Amazon crew. Let's just take look at this dude. Look at him. Come on, Max. Oh my gosh. It's the, there's that line from Cape Fear when they see De Niro and they're like, I don't know whether to look at him or read him. Some of the tattoos that he has, and he's got like sure. Michael Jordan. He's got, I mean, Fitz isn't His even in the same vicinity. His cat looks like Fitz's shirt almost. It does. Like it's like yeah. a pattern. I see a clock that oh. is an eyeball. Muhammad Ali. F Fitz Muhammad Ali's on there. Mm -hmm. Fitz has a lot of that too with his shirt off as well. It's just a different cut off. Roses, Friends. babies, baby. the word humble, and then the word beast. Beast. And he's both. And Max humble Crosby. Beast. Max Crosby is that kind of star. Like. No. Yeah. He, he, he has earned this. It's this, the teams he's been on the last years have just been, unfortunately, just you know sideways. But it's here's his moment, right? Like here's this is what we can have in the NFL. Like he's fun, he's cool. He had a cigar too. That great was story. Cigar. cigar. Looks like Maui. And meanwhile, <laughs> we've does. got we've got Mark Davis with about 11 bottles of water before in front of him, a lot and of water. just just chugging water. It is incredible, <laughs> incredible visuals last night, Sherry. Well, also I think you got what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas yes. when you think about it for the Chargers. But this is definitely going to carry over. This was such a statement win by Vegas, and Sean, you mentioned it. They just kept piling it on and on, which sort of a testament to this team and the fact that they weren't just going to like put up 42 at half and yeah. just coast. Um, I love your opinion. I mean, is momentum real? Like, as a player in a locker room, when you put up numbers like this, your coach is fighting for that head coach spot. Like, is there something real that's yeah. palpable in the locker room? Yeah, absolutely. I think these guys, they realize what's going on. And it's like, we're playing not just to win the football games, but we're, we want this guy to be here. We believe in him. We love the way he's treating us. The, you know, he's got that mindset that, like, I'm not going to grind on the guys. You know, you, there's been talk about how players were on eggshells before with the previous regime. And yeah. look, it's like, AP, you, you walk into, like, I have this kind of theory with cockroach coaches, I call them. Where cockroach like, coaches. Cockroach when, coaches. When the head coach walks into cafeteria, if everybody scatters like cockroaches when mm -hmm. lights come on, um, you got an issue. Like, Antonio Pierce is one of those guys, just like Brian Dable and, and you know, Tom Coughlin, you walk into the cafeteria and everybody like gravitates. You, yeah. you talk to them. Yeah. Like, okay. there's nothing worse than if the head coach walks into the cafeteria and everybody's like, just, all right, I'm taking this to go, I got to go. So, mm -hmm. there's definitely something brewing over there but the confidence is really just in when you're winning and you're having fun and now all of a sudden yeah. like th this it's it's a game you know